going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome into the 58th edition of the Tuesday Track Talk, featuring your Three Stones Picker. I am Kellen, your Jackman. I'm your Tire Changer, Cam. And I'm your Gas Man, Cam. And we have what we might think is the most controversial episode to date. Um, there's going to be a lot of back and forth in terms of all of the news in relation to the Martinsville race over the weekend. So uh, buckle up, <laughs> sit back and enjoy what's going to be uh, quite the debate here uh, as we come down the stretch. But before we get into that, we'll touch on ASA Stars National Tour wrapped up their season. We'll break you all the latest news and then we'll dive into it. So uh, gentlemen, how was the weekend? Good. Uh, I got the leaves picked up in the yard here because my landlord, a.k.a. my roommate, a.k.a. our good buddy, was gone That's for the weekend water. and left the work to me. Typical. So, no, I was all right otherwise. Um, I will say, obviously, because this is a big episode, I've got two drinking words for this. Ship and shenanigans. <laughs> And I'll get into both as we get to them. Okay. Yep. That's all I got otherwise. Cam? You know, I'm trying to think what I even did this weekend. <laughs> well, you're at your folks' place for one. Um, Badgers. Yeah, I was going to say Badgers, pretty miserable. Packers, pretty miserable. But, um, man, racing was just all three series across the board just awesome so um been biting well, my tongue and um holding my thumbs back all day for waiting for this so uh ready to rock and roll and uh we'll think this episode is going to follow suit with martinsville and uh tempers are going to get a little bit hot tonight so um <laughs> ready to rock and roll well uh, let's go ahead and let's just kind of do a quick recap of the ASA Stars. They visited Nashville for the All-American 400. So um, they wrapped up their season on uh, Sunday afternoon, kind of in unison with the cup race. So, Van Grohl, you uh, were kind of watching this one start to finish. So kind to uh, kick this one to you. Yeah, so I'll kind of go quickly through this one. Um, driver's championship is already lo already locked up before we got into the race. Casey Roddick was your driver's champ. The owner's championship was still up for grabs. It was between Anthony Campy, Anthony Campy, aka the Casey Roderick team, and the Donnie Wilson 28 team, which has had a couple drivers in it, mainly Cole Butcher, uh, for for the season. And obviously, for the, it's similar like NASCAR or any other one of those. The owner's championship is where the money's at. That's where you're yep. in your money at. So that was still up for grabs. Um, when it came to the race itself, Roddick was fast time over Matt Craig by one one thousandth of a second is what qualifying came down to. Yep. Um, but Roderick took the lead right out of the gate and everybody else kind of fell into ride. Um, when the first caution came out, Matt Craig took the lead on the ensuing restart. Um, and that's where things kind of got a little hectic for some of the guys. Matt Craig had a problem from the lead 60 laps in, ended up breaking an axle. Um, they got the left rear axle swapped out back on track, kind of slowly picked his way, but never ended up getting back to the lead. Um, Casey Roderick just absolutely dump truck of a car. Um, he ended up falling to back to 15th at one point in time in the race. Yep. Um, but Butcher ended up taking the lead on the restart after Craig had his issues and ended up taking the stage win, uh, stage one win, which was very big points for the owner's championship, like I said, with Roderick. Uh, he ended up gaining 10 points on Roderick in that point. So it, it was a 10-point lead after stage one. Um, on the ensuing restart, uh, Dawson Sutton gets the lead. Butcher falls to fifth from the outside, and then Billy Van Meter has an issue from there. I didn't really catch to really catch what the issue was, uh, but kind of ended up getting back on track from there. Um, Jonathan Knee driving the Richie Waters car, which had a great run with Johnny Sauter the weekend before, was it? Yep. 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 Um, he spins to bring out the caution with 154 to go, so just about halfway. Um, 
at that point, your lineup looks like uh, Doss Sutton, Gio Ruggiero, uh, Kyle Steckley, Jake Finch, and Steven Nassie were your top five. And they kind of stayed like that for a little while. Um, again, I think drivers were just kind of riding it out. Each little caution that came out, drivers coming for adjustments, pit stops here and there, but there was only real two stops for tires at that. Um, no. The big one here was Michael I and Hayden Plybon. Uh, they racked hard in the turn three wall. Yeah, I was going to, like I kind of said in the group chat, it's, that's one of the places that when you rack, you rack hard. It's kind of almost got a little bit of like a Madison type feel where yep. you get caught in the wrong spot and you get turned around. Those can be some pretty wicked hits. Yep. Um, and those two kind of got caught together and Plybon, he turned around and he hit the fence backwards. That was not a soft hit by any means. No, it kind of looked, it was kind of a hind went down, Plybon went up type of scenario, and they just touched tires. Plybon actually ended up climbing Heinz car a little bit. Yep. Um, but yeah, just, I, I think it was just a racing scenario there, personally. Yeah. So, yep. Um, Ooh, geez, geez. Geez. I know. Dawson Sutton wins stage two. Uh, Derek Thorne ended up starting in the back due to, due to a post qualifying tech inspection issue. Uh, yep. something about tape, too much tape basically is what it came down to. Um, so Thorne made his way up to third. Craig was back up to eighth. Roderick was 12th and Butcher was 14th at the end of stage two. Uh, caution with 44 to go. B- Boris Yorkovic got it, got some help into the wall. A lot of guys came in at this point to make their final adjustments on the car, kind of setting up for the end of the race. Uh, another one with about 14 to, or sorry, with about 20 to go sets up a 14 lap sprint. Uh, from there, Ruggiero and Sutton were up in the lead and they were just going at it. Banging mm-hmm. doors a little bit. Uh, Derek Thorne and Connor Kresic gets together after Francis taps Kresic with 10 to go. Um, yeah. both taken out of the race at that point. Uh, Kresic was not happy, showed his displeasure and Thorne just unfortunate there. For him, had a fast car. Was... Yeah, well, Kresic just kind of got turned around, and it it was kind of awkward because he like tried to save it, but then all of a sudden he just ended up right in traffic. It was one of the, he he was right on that inside wall trying to correct it, trying to correct it, and it overcorrected, shot up in the track, and Thorn had just nowhere to go. Yep. So. Yeah. Um, you had a green white checkered. Uh, Jonathan Knee ended up, or uh, somebody spun out on the first green white checkered, ended up having a second one. Uh, from there, Jay Garcia just kind of snuck his way in, really surprised everybody, and yep. led only one lap, the most important lap, uh, <laughs> to end up winning the race. If you're going to lead one, that's one to lead. That's one to lead. So uh, Jake Garcia ends up winning the All-American 400. Uh, he beats Roderick, uh, Dawson Sutton, Gio Ruggiero, and Steven Assey, who was your top five in that one. Um, That's a hell of a top five that Garcia held off there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, obviously, I mentioned that Roderick was the driver's champ. Anthony Campy did end up wrapping up the owner's championship. So uh, for two the two years of ASA racing, the driver and the team have basically swept that year's championships. Yep. So sure. that was the All-American 400. A couple cars got wrecked up, but otherwise a lot of single car stuff. Uh, great, neat little track. Definitely one I want to try and get to at some point at some point in time. Yeah, for sure. So, um, no, overall great race. ASA season is done and over with. Really the next big Super late model races are kind of towards the end of the year, the Big League and the Snowball Derby. Super late model season's coming to an end. Yep. All eyes on five flags is what it comes down to. Yep. Yep, so. exactly. Cool. Well, good little race. Uh, obviously, crowning another champ. We'll be curious to see as the season's wrap up, schedules start to come out. We'll be curious to see what uh, – 2025 brings for the ASA stars national tour. And I know we've been full. Vo- I especially have been vocal on the ASA portion side of things. And maybe that's a discussion we bring up in the off season when that time comes. Yeah. So be uh, curious to see as you know, we've uh, seen a few schedules come out of late. So um, from 
the stars to some other stars making moves. Let's go ahead and jump into uh, it's the unnamed segment. It's all of the tidbits that don't fit anywhere else. We make them their own category. So um, we'll go ahead and jump into um, all of the news of the last week in the racing world. So um, looking at the list here, who wants to jump in and go first? Uh, I guess I can take the first one here real quick. Okay. Um, we're going to start with a downer and end with an upper here, I guess we'll call it. <laughs> yep. um, starting with the downer, Erndale Speedway Event Center and Drag Strip announces it'll be closing following the 2024 season. Uh, its last date will be December 21st. Irwindale has held a few ARCA races. Um, never really heard much out of the track, in all honesty, just from my my side of things. Um, but yep. again, never never good to hear a track shutting down. Yep. So, um, on the positive side of things, uh, the LaSalle Speedway announces that they'll be bringing back racing to the Illinois Valley. Uh, they're looking to do about one to two events a month, running from May through October. Um, they're going to have monster trucks, movies, concerts, flea markets. So, the, the grounds itself will be busy, but as far as racing events, just one or two here and there. Just get the place back open and rock and rolling and see how it goes and flows and go from there. Yep, absolutely. Cam, you want to go ahead and take this next one? Yep. Uh, dirt super late model racing. T-Mac, Tim McCready, is going to make two smart uh, two starts with Big Frog Racing and the Rocket XR 1.2 um, at the National 100. He finished eighth, and then um, he's got Charlotte coming up. So um, as dirt late model silly season starts shaking out here you can start kind of um reading between lines and figuring out what seats are if they're not announced you can start coming to conclusions about who's going to be in seats and um as some of these guys start making some of these moves you can start there's a reason behind it so um guys starting to line up uh test driving some stuff and uh starting to line it up for 2025 so um t-mac uh, with big frog racing so yeah, so kind of staying on that uh, driver announcement uh, continuation line, uh, Carson Ferguson has announced, or Paylor Motorsports has announced, that he will be running Lucas Oil full-time, um, so that pairing will stay together, obviously. Uh, when Tim McCready, who just had mentioned, stepped away from that program, um, he stepped in, grabbed the reins of that program, and they felt comfortable with that, so they're looking at Lucas Oil for 2025. And then to kind of go on top of that, um, you have an additional driver, uh, Dan Ebert, a modified guy out of Minnesota. Um, he go ahead, goes ahead and announces that he'll be taking a rocket chassis and going on tour with uh, the Lucas Oil Dirt Late Model Series. He'll be chasing the rookie of the year. So um, got to remember there's uh, really good money in the Lucas Oil with the Rookie of the Year paying $20,000 on top of all of the contingencies and that $1.3 million worth of points fund that they're offering. So um, taking a big step for the Minnesota Mod Driver. So that uh, would be cool to see where he kind of shakes out and how the season goes for him. So be a big adjustment, but uh, be interesting to watch along. Interesting choice, too. We kind of talked, not to get us off track, but just interesting kind of choice there. We talked about choosing Lucas Oil versus Wu because we talked, you know, World Outlaws is kind of that Midwest, Illinois, Wisconsin, Minnesota, North Dakota, um, kind of that Midwest series. But um, got a Midwest guy. Yep. Money talks. Got a Midwest guy going to the East Coast. So, um, yep. interesting move, but can't help but root for a Midwest guy. Yeah, for sure. I don't, wish I'll much... take these next... oh. I yep. don't wish much good out of Minnesota, but um, this is one, it's one cause that we can get behind and root for somebody from Minnesota. Fair enough. <laughs> That's fair. Um, I suppose I could take these next couple ones here. 
Uh, okay. The ASA Stars Ooh. National Tour. Hey, I just talked about having some words about them recently. Um, <laughs> they're going to bring back the ABC committee. Uh, Marty Mello and Freddie Creary are going to be heading this project up. Basically, it's just going to be the committee that's going to oversee all the rules and the specs and everything like that, help with the inspection process, make sure everybody's running approved and sealed equipment, especially on the engine side of things. Uh, obviously, Majeski has made it very clear his stance on the motor side of things. So, yep. Uh, yeah. So obviously some of it is resonating that they're making a change. Yep. Um, and then on the cars tour side of things, so earlier this year it was announced, uh, that, oh God, I'm, his name skips me right now. He went over to junior's team. That's Cam's buddy, Connor Hall. Connor Hall. Yes. He is leaving. He left the 2020 or the 22 Nelson motorsports team, uh, to go to junior motorsports. The Nelson Motorsports teams announced Carson Lofton will be hopping into that ride uh, along with uh, running the Virginia Triple Crown races in 2025. So that seat has been filled. Yep. Can't Good have compare. an episode with, can't have an episode without a Connor Hall shout out, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Right. Lofton's hopping into some competitive equipment, so I'd expect him to be quick. So, yep, absolutely. Cam, you got this next one. You want me to rip it? Uh, no, I I got roasted last week, so on this, but uh, oh no, no, sorry, wrong, wrong pronunciation. Shouldn't shouldn't be able to be botch this one. Heading or racing? We talked about. Um, I think they're running the four with Brett Moffat, or did? Yep. Yeah, um, but they acquired the assets from Brett Holmes Racing and will run these last two races um, for prep for 2025 season and uh, potential to maybe go full-time uh, with the truck series. So um be interesting to see if Brett Moffitt can maybe, you know, start something, reignite his career and, you know, kind of build um, – a truck team from the ground up. No, yep. seasoned veteran, new team, um, and that yeah, be kind of an interesting pairing. So uh, that is the heading or racing team in acquiring the assets from Brett Holmes. Yeah, uh, jumping up to Xfinity Series news, uh, Brennan Pool uh, signs an extension with Alpha Prime Racing and the number forty-four to run full time next year in the Xfinity Series. All right. Uh, another bit of exciting news here. Richard Childers Racing has announced that uh, Jesse Love will be returning with the team in 2025 in that number two car with sponsorship from Whelan Engineering. Nope. From the Xfinity Series to the NASCAR Series, kind of some, I don't know if breaking news. Well, yeah, it was breaking news, but... Um, Booty Barker, uh, Bubba Wallace's crew chief, will move to a behind-the-scenes role for 2020 or 2311 racing at the end of this year. Um, so that was announced last last week that he will go behind the scenes, and um, I guess I'll, you know, take the next Double one up. here. And, and it was announced that uh, Charles Denicky will be the crew chief for Bubba next year, coming from. McAnally Hilgeman Racing in the Truck Series. Christian Eckes is current crew chief. So, um, kind of an interesting move there, going from Truck Series to Cup Series. But um, you know, it's something we don't talk about a lot. Is you know this time of year when not only are driver seats hot, but um, crew chiefs as well. That you know, if the team's not performing or hasn't performed up to expectations, if it's not driver the next guy on the block is crew chief so um yeah it'll be interesting bubba getting a new crew chief and i know that kind of that trio of booty bubba and freddie have been together for a while so um a little bit of a change up there for bubba moving forward and uh we'll see what it shake we'll see how it shakes out next year yeah for sure um I'll grab this next one and then we'll 
get into the woods of this episode. Uh, Wood Brothers have announced that Miles Stanley will crew chief the 21 next year for Josh Berry. So um, they have solidified their plans for who will call the shots for Berry in the 21. Uh, some follow-up from the antitrust lawsuit that was filed earlier this year against NASCAR by 2311 Front Row. They had their preliminary injunction hearing today for said lawsuit. Um, this was, excuse me, uh, this was basically to get the discussions rolling as far as whether 2311 and Front Row are going to retain their charter status during the antitrust lawsuit for next year. So this is kind of a separate deal from the actual antitrust lawsuit. This was basically 2311 and Front Row trying to still get the money and the benefits of the charter system during said lawsuit. Um, it was a pretty quick hearing. I believe it was about two hours. Uh, no phones were allowed in, so everybody released their statements at the same time. Basically, what it came down to is the judge is going to release their findings on Friday. Yep. As far as what came of this. Um, let me double check one thing here real quick. Each side basically had a half an hour to make a case, per se. Yep. Or justify why they're doing what they're doing. And it sounded like there were very spirited discussions between the two of them. Hmm. I didn't see it. one of NASCAR's um, big arguments in their side was that um, under the new charter agreement, around half of the money will go back to the teams um, from the broadcasting deals. So, uh, that was one thing I saw that they were relying on or one of their, I don't know what you want to call it, the backbone of one of their arguments or one of the main points in their arguments. So this is, we are in uncharted times um, across the board in NASCAR. We'll just leave it at that. You sure? <laughs> so, Hopefully we hear some news Friday as far as the future of those two teams when it comes to 2025. That is correct. So. Anything else we need to add out of this before we dive into the events that were Martinsville? I don't think so. I think... I think we kind of feel like we've wrapped it up. Let me just comb hey. the bookmarks on the on the old X app because oh, yeah. as, <laughs> I, I guess two things we could I, I we could add to this. Uh schedules. Cars tour and the high limit series announced their yep. schedules today. Yep. For sure. Cam, you know what I said would bring world peace to all of this NASCAR stuff? <laughs> You ready? You know what, what brings world peace back to all of this? Derek Cross in the 16 in the Cup Series. Well, that I did see that. Um, no, nope. but I did, I did see this this one today that I bookmarked. Good, good, good call to go back in the bookmarks there, Gas Man Cam. What if we? What if this is all just a bad dream and we all wake up? And Kyle Busch is driving the M and M's. Brad Keselowski is driving the Miller Lite. Jimmy Johnson's oh driving God. the Lowe's. Gordon's driving the Dupont. Tony Stewart's driving the Office Depot. Hamlin's driving FedEx, and Carl Edwards is driving Aflac. <laughs> My God, times were so much simpler. Yeah, and I did see one of the other things. Um, I should send it to you guys too. Tony Stewart. I don't know if you guys saw one of the interviews he put out, but. He basically said this whole charter shit. He he's sick. He got sick and tired of NASCAR, and that's not it. Not good. Pretty interesting. Yeah, he was. He's fed up with it. So, uh, um, yikes. Going back through my bookmarks, uh, one point of here, and obviously we're talking about Martinsville. Uh, Team Penske got their hundredth win with Ford in the NASCAR Cup Series with the win at Martinsville. Nice. Thought that was pretty noteworthy. And then Richard Childress put out a post today. Uh, just a picture of him at a cleaned out desk. 11 years and over 4,000 days at working at SHR. 
He said tomorrow, as we record here on Monday, will be his last day in the building. Damn. Kind of sad. Yeah. So uh, that was all that I had on my bookmarks. Yeah, you guys had mine. So, well, <clears throat> let's let's go ahead and we're just going to briefly touch on the end of the Xfinity and truck races. So we'll just kind of touch on those. Um, we'll give you a couple of the cliff notes and then we'll dissect the Cup Series, I guess. It's a good way to put it. Dissect it, analyze it, give it a couple of opinions, and then we'll go from there. Uh, truck race. Basically, what it comes down to is they got to the end and the boys didn't really want to race. They just wanted to house one another. I don't know. Ship, I guess. That's where the first word comes in. Ship. And I tell you what, the best way I heard it described was Pete Pistoni on Sirius XM Radio Channel 90 this morning on the morning drive. He said that the episode of the races should have been sponsored by UPS by the amount of shipping that was going on by the guys. <laughs> Oh, for real. So basically what we're talking about this truck race is what it comes down to is Taylor Gray and Ben Rhodes got by Akis clean for the lead, and then he came back and just shipped the both of them. Um, the Taylor Gray one especially. Yeah, he ran him two or three grooves up, and it was just there was – he had no shot. Uh, basically what it comes down to is he – I mean Taylor Taylor Gray. I mean he raced him about as clean as you could race a guy at Martinsville. Yeah. In all honesty, yeah, he never did. used the horn. Got underneath him, raced him for two three laps, got by him. He got around then... him. He stepped out on him, and Eckes gave him a lane. Yep. Yep. That's because Eckes knew he was going to be in trouble if he chopped him. He was going to get turned. Yep. So I I don't know. I mean, Eckes kind of ran through those guys, but the. Hard part of this situation is these two guys are going to go race each other in the Xfinity Series next year. Yeah, that is, that ain't over between them two guys. So this is uh, that might be a hey, just don't. I didn't forget this one. Yep. So. 100%. Um. The only it's other thing just... is, I didn't. So kind of going on that. Obviously, uh, Gray was not happy racing for a championship four spot. Uh, he went out to victory lane on the front stretch to confront Akis. I didn't love the crew guy stepping between the drivers. No, especially when Taylor Gray came by himself, essentially. He had the NASCAR security guys with them, which they're just doing their job, but he didn't bring any crew guys with them, didn't bring – you know, as we saw with Stenhouse a while back, you know, family to get involved. It was Taylor Gray and Taylor Gray alone. Yep. And then the guy that was going to have to separate the crew drivers from NASCAR. I just didn't like that before he even got there, that crew guy stepped in between him and he was kind of mouthing off. And I'm like, yep, that ain't your place, dude. Nope. I get defending your driver and I get being behind him and doing that, but that – Taylor Gray wasn't there for you. He was. He wanted a handful of Akis. Yep. And unfortunately, and and Taylor Gray brought this up in his interview. He said, "You know, I'd punch a guy, or I'd, you know, do something in Phoenix, but I'm afraid about getting a twenty thousand dollar fine." Yep. Yeah. And it's just, like, what up for the retaliation? Right. Come on. Yeah. So just, yeah, I don't it know. leaves I just, a guy vulnerable from doing anything. Yeah, I didn't love that. Did he just like all of a sudden he's up there and the dude stopped in between him? Like that's ah. No, nope. my favorite work. And honestly, it's the most picture perfect way of doing this was, and this is flashback to the past. Keslowski and Jeff Gordon at Texas, however many years ago. Like you see, yep. you see, Gordon got out of the car. He's getting his helmet off. He's walking around the car. You see all the crew guys kind of shoving and pushing each other around them. Gordon just yep. makes his way over, gets to Kislowski, and is kind of separated. I don't remember by who. But then you yep. see, obviously, that whole scenario then play out afterwards. But crew guys are doing their thing. The drivers are doing their thing. And that's yep. how it should be. 
Yep, leave them separated. Yep. So. Yep. Yeah, they. I mean, though, yeah, I don't know. Go ahead, Cam. No, I was just gonna say it handcuffs. I, not that we need retaliation and smashed up stuff and black eyes and stuff in our sport, but um, you know, it it does get to a point though where you got to draw the line in the sand and you got to say, you know, enough is enough. I'm done being raced like this and getting run over by the same guy repeatedly. But then, like you guys said, it NASCAR's got you by the balls if you're gray, because if you retaliate on pit road, there's a $25,000 fine. If you retaliate on the track next week, there's another fine. Like it, it, it doesn't how, let a how guy. Does, how does he, yeah. How does he, how does he get his point across, you know, without, it doesn't let a guy grab a guy by the collar and get in his face. Correct. <laughs> and how, how, how he's going to do that in a roundabout way is he's going to make his life a living hell next week. Yep. And honestly, and, 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 and it doesn't help him though. It doesn't help yep. him win the race because he's too busy trying to give Eckes the screws. Yep. And not that Eckes needs this lesson. I mean, he might, but. And you hear this a lot with young drivers. Definitely kinda. does. Yeah, and the old and the old school way of you learn real quick when you get popped in the nose. Yep. I think we're going to talk about a Cup Series driver here in a little bit that might need one too. And I was going to say to the same exact thing. You know, some of these guys might let it go once, but as they said, as they said in the Cup Series, when we talk about that particular driver in the off season, these drivers talk to each other and they look back on the season. And going forward, you know, I guess if the consensus around the guy, the garage is this guy's going to race you dirty. He'll do what he need. He'll do whatever he has to do yep. at all costs to get a win. Um, it's going to set the standard for a long year in the in the old colleague car next year. So, um, or you get the, or you keep getting the eye yeah, keeps driving in over his head, and I made the mistake. And I know there was a driver that kept saying that at one point in time, and I can't remember who it was. Um, but it's just far. that only goes so far. Yep, you can do it once, and then you go, all right, you learned. Yep. What are you going to do to fix it? Starting right now. Yep, that was your freebie. No. So ultimately, Truck Series did get to lock in a final four, and that let's just. Uh, if I'm going off of memory here, it should be Enfinger, yep. Eckes, yep, Jeski, yes, and nope, I'm out on the fourth one. Yeah, why is that escaping my mind? Oh, Heim, Heim time, Heim time. Yep. Yep. Corey Heim. So, those will be your four racing for a championship on Sunday. Or Friday night, I'm sorry. Jesus. I know you guys don't like it, but I am a little bit of a Majeski guy when it comes to the truck series. So, Truck series I'm good with. Yep. Um, last point on this. And then on, on Akis, getting back to him, just – total cop out and shit move to at the press conference after the way he drove to say it's Martinsville. <laughs> yeah. And then not only that, but then he doubled down and said, Bill McAnally hired me to win races and that's what I'm going to do. And it's like, okay, I guess if you're going to give it that way, then you can't bitch and complain when guys are going to race you the same exact way and say, I'd say yep. the same thing. If I went to Bristol, ah, it's Bristol. Yep. yep. Or or Cam, this is this is your opportunity here. What did uh Hamlin say about Logano one time? <laughs> ah, it's short track racing. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean it, that it's just a cop. Yeah, I don't know. I don't like that either. Um, no, no. It opens yourself up to be raced differently. Yep. yep. He'll he'll get his own. Okay. Let's jump ahead here to the Xfinity Series real quick. Van Gerl, you're going to have to carry me on this one because thanks to the CW, I can't watch Xfinity Series. So RIP to my Xfinity career. Well, well <laughs> the, the word ship comes into play here as well. We'll say that this one is sponsored by Amazon because they're shipping just as much. <laughs> um, this one was mainly between Chandler Smith and Cole Custer. So 
Chandler Smith was in a must-win situation. He ends up bumping uh, Custer out of the way, and then Custer just sends him for – or no, sorry. It was the other way around. Custer got by Chandler Smith, and then Chandler Smith just sent Custer. Okay. Yep. If I nope, sorry, I had it wrong. I'm gonna look at this up because I want to make sure I get this right. I'm pretty Damn. sure it was really quick. Uh, <laughs> Badger men's basketball, they're losing 21 to five to Holy Cross. 13 minutes to go in the first half. Who's Holy Cross? That's who's yeah. beating the Badger men's basketball. Well, that's the point. Who's Holy Cross? You got me there. Yep. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, where am I looking here? Uh, let's try this one. I'm going to have to just skip through the video. Nope, that's not the one I'm looking for. You guys keep talking here. For all right, oh, Sorry, I got to be the one that's talking on this. Oh, Basically, yeah. what, what happened here was, again, ship be ship. Guys kept shipping each other, and nobody could agree on it. It's just, again, you got the same old Martinsville situation here. And there's just no, there was no respect for yep. either either one of them. So, man, yeah. I just obviously they got into conversation. This I did see. They got into conversation after the race, and uh, Chandler Smith was that an open hand slap? Question mark. <laughs> yeah. Paul Mopin tried to get him across the face, and after he walked away. Did you see Cole Custer's reaction? He literally goes like this. Yep. <laughs> He's laughing. I'm like, Jesus Christ. So, conveniently enough, starting next, well, next week for the truck race, uh, Dean Thompson sponsored by MCM Transfer- Transportation, and they said, making ship happen. Jesus. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it's just – Guys are, are shipping each other again and just not doing it right way. Though one of the comments that thoughts that I had here too was if you're gonna if you're gonna send a guy, yep. you better make sure you get out of the way or you make sure you pull away because you know it's coming back. Yep. If you're gonna do it, you gotta bolt. You gotta do it and be gone. And everybody knows about the traditional, you know, bump and run. It's it's got to be a bump just to get the guy out of the lane and then go from there. Yep. That's when you send a guy. That's when you have an issue. Correct. So. Yeah. Chandler Smith gave a little. I mean, Chandler Smith. No offense, just a little scrawny guy. But that was quite. Uh, if you're gonna throw something, throw something a little bit better than an open hand slap. Chandler Smith, also a guy that's looking for a job next year. Right. Yeah, one oh. tweet that I <laughs> one tweet saw, that I saw said, if "You're gonna throw a punch like that. Uh, the old construction workers are gonna. You're gonna get your ass whooped in the old construction working crew." <laughs> so, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, after you made the comment of his dad in the construction crew, yep. Yeah. So I don't know. Just another case of of. Are we overreacting here too? Like to the point of whoever made the initial bump, and sorry, I'm going to screw this up but not have the order correct, but to the point of if we're going to just move a guy out of lane, are we overreacting by shipping a guy then? It just doesn't make sense to me. I don't know. It's hard to say. I feel like some of it's situational. <laughs> I'm going to say I'm going to – I don't like to say this because it doesn't give you a concrete answer, but I think sometimes it just depends. Yeah. If I remember the order correctly, it was Smith bumped Custer out of the way. Yep. Bumped, keyword. And then on the ensuing restart, Custer shipped Smith. <laughs> Take it or leave it. So A lot of shipping this episode. Yeah. yeah. So – I don't know. Again, just where where is the ethics act? Yep. So okay. that's what I got. All right. 
here we are. Here we are. This is this is where we're at. This is what we, we this is what we've been waiting for. Okay, here we go. Cup Series of Martinsville. Uh, let's kind of talk about the race itself a little bit, and then we will go on and discuss the highly contested, debated end of the race manipulation, wall riding, shenanigans. Correct. Games. The other drinking word. Yeah. So, I mean, really, first stage kind of went uninterrupted. Green flag pit stops. Guys were kind of minding their own P's and Q's. Um, Holsch Rex can't catch a damn break. No. Speeding penalty gets himself caught. Uh, down a couple laps. Fighting for his life. Uh, Hosevar proved, again, that he's a danger to society. Uh, just, again, a couple instances where he just, he just drove over his head and went into two and just housed a few cars, like... Wasn't even close to making the corner. No. So I don't know. I just and the commentators, play by play commentators, just made a very big point of saying this cannot happen. It can happen once, and you can admit it, but you can't do this all the time and say, "Oh, I just, I missed it." Like you're going to get was, raced very differently, and they were very critical of Hosevar. Like I don't know at one point in time, I forget which one it was, but there was one of them where even before they got to the replay, they said, "Yeah, there's there's another Holsevar one coming up." Yep. So they were heavily critical of Holsevar uh, in this race. So just having a hard time, I don't know, driving within reason. I guess. Would be and even I, to that point, yeah. it's like I know you're you're trying to get everything you can, but you also got to make sure you're not. You're not pissing anybody off, and you're bringing the car home in one piece. Mm-hmm. Like, if anything, this is a – take this opportunity to learn. Yep. Yeah. Talk about We talk about racecraft all the time. That's a perfect opportunity to learn in racecraft. You know, especially in a race that at that point you know you're not going to win. Yep. And especially with the, play, with the bigger picture at hand with the playoffs, you don't need to be pulling that off on a playoff driver. Uh, the implications of that, you might lose a reputation that you could never get back for somebody that's fighting for playoff spots. And talk about getting popped in the nose. That's a good op- That's a good way to get popped in the nose. Absolutely it is. So, so. Uh, host of our struggle, uh, stage two was kind of the start was a little bit jumbled up with some yellows, kind of cars getting turned around. Um, MTJ couldn't really catch a break and then kind of run through stage two. And then we have the Kyle Bush lost wheel restart that how they scored that. I don't, I will never be able to figure out that debacle. The only, and I thought, I thought about this a little bit. The only way I can think of it, that this was not a botched restart was that the pace car had already pulled off when the tire came off. If the tire had come off and the pace car was still on track, you have that opportunity to call the start off. Right, but I guess my question is we don't go back to the last scored lap? That's what I thought, too. And they brought it up on the broadcast. I think Latart brought it up. Was uh, in a caution, it goes to the last scoring loop. And you had had never drivers that lost a couple spots, Blaney included, and I was listening to his radio. He was hot. pissed off. Yeah. Well, because it's like they and Larson even was too, because he ended up losing the lead on that whole yeah, exchange. Byron, yeah, Byron's a control car then. Yep. And it's you never got to the next scoring loop in order for the lineup to change. Essentially, they, they, the lineup should remain the same coming to the start finish line. They they didn't even get to turn one. No. They didn't even get to the corner. I don't I that one I can't figure out for the life of me. I don't know. Did it ultimately affect the race? No, it didn't. But it's just another I, precursor to what we were about to see. Correct. And it's just another where what was the thought process here? Yeah. And, that's and you know, he... unfortunately, we're probably not a good we're unless unless it gets brought up when Elton Soar's on Sirius XM sometime this week. Um yeah. 
because obviously it's getting overshadowed by something else. Yep. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, get to a positive side on this race, though. The tire that NASCAR brought, or sorry, Goodyear brought to this track. That, hands down, I think was what saved this race at as far as being one of the greater Martinsville races in the past handful of years. But let's let's not let this get forgotten or missed. The racing product itself was awesome. Yep, absolutely. Guys could, guys could pass. The strategy meant something. Tires meant something. The, the race was there. Product, correct. The race product itself, that package, that short track package that they had, finally produced. Yep. And, and that is something for that. And I think that's something you could take to a Bristol. You could take to a Richmond and have it yep. work. Yep. We wanted we wanted the soft tire, especially when we saw it at Bristol. We didn't get that second that we didn't get that reproduction of it in the playoff race. Yeah. But I think we've got a very good all right, we can either take this there or we can slightly modify this to where we want it to be. Yep. Yes, let's let's not get let's not get that twisted or missed. That the racing product itself is awesome. And you even and you brought this up too that the track gained the rubber. You didn't have to put any sticky stuff down. Yeah, let it rubber. Let's not spray. Yep. Why spray? We didn't have to spray. It produced a great race. Yep. The hell with the spray. Absolutely, absolutely. So the the and the difference in speeds that you saw in cars still came into play. I want to yep. bring up, and this kind of goes to the point of here comes Blaney. Of, I, I go to Auto Racing Analytics again. Thank God for the bookmarks because I got her handy. Um, had the entire 500 laps in the Cup race, but based on median lap speed data alone, the top nine. This is where the top nine roughly would have finished. So. I'm going to try and bring it up for those that are watching this. I'm going to explain it for those that are listening. So Blaney and the yellow boxes essentially scored the winner based on the median lap. Yep. Uh, William Byron is almost a lap down in second place. Okay. Uh, one lap down is Kyle Larson and Chase Elliott. And then two laps down, you have Hamlin, Dylan, Briscoe, Pierce, and or Priest and Kozlowski. So essentially, yep. you had two cars to finish on lead lap, almost entirely lapped down, based on Blaney's median speed. Yeah. So, for lack of a better term, Blaney brought a rocket, but you also had the variance of speeds with the tire that was there. You had variation. Nobody got stuck behind cars. Correct. And I think you saw that, especially on that last run with Blaney, where he came from 10th on that bo that quote-unquote botched restart and from the he pit had, troubles that he had. Pit troubles. He drove by Byron twice. He got yep. by Elliott. He got by Hamlin. He got Larson. by Larson. He got by everybody. He And he didn't he didn't rough anyone up. Not much. Not no, much. It was What he did was fair game. Anyone, anyone else that he bumped, he had kind of gotten into Larson a time or two. Larson was going to say that that was a fair game. Yep, and that was one of those. It was the bump. I'm there. Second one is I'm. If you don't move, I'm bumping you out of the way or moving you out of the way. Third one is the move out of the way. Yep. It's what yep. it is. For sure. But ultimately, that end of the race, Blaney had the car to beat. He had the long run car. The long run showed up and. Did, well, did lap well, traffic well, hurt or did lap traffic help Blaney? Absolutely. But he was also one of those guys that he could get through the lap traffic very well, whether he was in the middle of the pack, in the lead, chasing down the leader, whatever the case may be. Yep. He had a car that could run Martinsville. Yep. For sure. Ultimately, and ultimately the championship. Yeah, and ultimately that got him in, especially in, you want to talk about a back against the wall moment. At one point when uh, Hamlin was leading, he was like fifty three points to the red. Yep, like like not even close. 
the ultimate you need to win to get in scenario. Absolutely. Comes in and says, I got gotcha. you. Yep. Two years in a row. Yep. Two years in a row he does that now. Yep. For sure. It's insane. So here's where – so let's talk about – Let's talk about the race as it played out. What do we have happen? Byron starts to struggle a little bit. He gets two Chevy cars behind him in Ross Chastain and Austin Dillon. There's some radio communications around knowing the point situation. Do they push? Do they not? I, nobody knows. NASCAR's looking at it now. What it comes down to is the 23 car above the wall is kind of here's what's going or has an issue and here's what's going on with the 20 knowing he needs a point. All of a sudden he pulls up lane with like two to go. I believe it was 23 gets a spot or the 20 gets a spot. He kind of sails it in at three gets loose, catches the wall, basically rode from the middle of three through four on the wall, cross the start finish line. That's how the race finishes for the two guys on the playoff. They end with their respective finishing positions and tied. Yep. And, and and then NASCAR makes a call. So which the tie would have given Bell the spot. If they had outright tied without Bell getting the the safety violation of riding the wall, Bell would be in the final four. Yep. So, I think we I think we have to hit this in three things. We have to hit the Bell Wall ride. Yep. We have to hit the Bubba thing. Yep. And we have to hit the Chevy thing. Yep. So what one do we want to hit first? I think the Wall ride. Let's just start there. My big thought is okay. You ship it in. You he sailed it in. Yep. Got by Wallace, which we'll talk about that obviously later. Yep. Hits the wall. Where's the effort to get off the wall? If you look at the in car, the steering wheel was turned to the right. That's my point. And even without right, see, yep. Even without seeing the in car, where is the effort to get off the wall? You're in the right. wall, fine, but where's the effort to get off? And I don't see it. He also visibly picked up speed. Correct. Which now, some is say, it, is it the Chastain move? No, it's the half of the Chastain move. The but last half made, of it. Yep. NASCAR made their stance and said, "You cannot do this," and they ruled it under a safety violation. That's the that's other big that, thing too. That's where that gate is. Yep. That the in and out, basically the ramp, quote unquote yep. the ramp. Um, that's where that gate is that opens and closes to let everyone out of the infield. Yep. So. I it if we got to give opinions, I say safety violation for Bell, correct call. By the letter of the law, I say it's correct. Especially again, where was the effort to get off the wall? Correct. Here's my kind of what I thought about it today. Here's what I thought: Bell got himself in a tricky situation. Did he have nothing to lose? No. But he forced NASCAR to make a decision. Okay, you put that rule in play. It's not the same. What I did isn't the same. But I'm going to make you make a call. Yep. I, yep. I don't know. Maybe they turn around and say, look at the video, and he does try to get off the wall. And they say, well, he made an attempt, and he didn't go all the way through. But he, he hit it, rolled it, bounced off, and came back down. Then you're having a different conversation. Yep. I don't know. Looking at it, do I think that call was made correctly? Yes. I'm not going to be, beat the drum, but I 100% agree. Um, was the right call. Um, I don't know the exact verbiage or wording of the NASCAR rule, but I'm assuming any sort of wall riding like that is a direct violation of the rule. And... <clears throat> Say what you want about what was going through Christopher's Bell, Christopher Bell's mind. I know he said he, you know, threw it in there, got loose, which his back end did get a little bit loose and got off the wall or got into the wall. 
but you can't tell me for one second that in the back of Bell's mind that there wasn't a, hey, let's chastain it. Like, he knew. I'm going to throttle up. Um, yeah, exactly. He's seen it done, and he can say it was different, but ultimately he hits the wall and he throttles it up, and it's the same thing hitting the wall and throttling up and yeah, it wasn't exactly a Chastain, but it was 70% of a Chastain. And I think by the definition of wall ride, um, outside of Chastain, which is the definition, this is the next, the next best thing. So, and I haven't even seen the in car. If Kellen, if you do say his wheel is turned right, I mean, okay. Yeah, there's just no, like you said, it's one thing if he throws it in there and he bounces off the wall and then he, you know, he throws it in there and he gives it one good hard hit and, you know, a little bit of speed and then he comes off the wall. But no, it was hit it center of the corner and ride it to the finish line there. Yeah, that is. In my mind, it's the right call. The other thing I think about, too, and this kind of goes to, like, the sprint car side and the midget car side of things, maybe a little bit of late model side thing, too. You hit that cushion, you kind of let that be your propulsion off. You hit that cushion, and then you hit that straight line off. Like, yeah, I wonder of, if yep, you're kind of what Bell was kind of thinking of, and it just didn't exactly work. No. As intended. Because, I mean, if that were the case where he kind of bounces off, like you were saying, bounces off the wall as he throttles up and and goes straight, I could make the argument that's not wall riding. That's just missed it, got back in, gathered it up, and went going. Yep. I could make that argument. But in this case, I don't think so. Yeah. So, obviously, that was only part of the equation in that situation. But – um. I do think NASCAR got it right, and I do think that was meets the definition of wall ride, so to speak. So, um, yeah, it, it sucks that it ends that way, and NASCAR yeah. has to get involved, but it is what it is. So, any other so, things? Any any other thoughts on the wall ride? I mean, I think we, we've we got that covered, honestly. So, All right, then let's go to part part one of the wall ride slightly before it. Let's talk about Bubba Wallace. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preface this. I just watched a clip from the, the Dirty Bowl media today with uh, Freddie Kraft. Coming from Freddie Kraft, so again, take this as you do with it. He said that if they're trying to manipulate the race, they would have been better off to manipulate it when the 23 car was in the lucky dog and Christopher Bell was a lap down. He said if we wanted to manipulate it, that would have been the time to do it because if we wanted to do it, we'd have backed up to the 20, given him the lucky dog, so he's not trapped the lap down, yellow comes out. Yep. So he's saying – they didn't manipulate the race because they should have done it at a different point that would have been significantly more beneficial for him. See, and like, so, and this is going to lead into the Chevy part, which we'll talk about in a bit, but there was the intention. Whether you did it on the lucky dog or you did it in the way that it happened, there was the intention and there was the thought of it. And that's not good. Whoa. See, <laughs> so, so the fact that he's talking about that, like that, like manipulating the race. Dude, you're not it doing was yourself discussed. any favors. Yeah, yeah, dude, you're not doing yourself any favors. Exactly. You're literally talking about manipulating the race. It doesn't matter when. You're still talking about manipulating it. But it does. How many ways do you want to skin a cat? It's like, Apparently dude, there's nothing to do it. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, I'm just telling but, you what I, I know. But, Thirty-three minutes ago, got posted on the X machine. So, if so I'm if I'm oh, an executive I'm at. at 2311 and I hear that, I'm telling Freddie to shut the hell up. So, <laughs> so if you oh. <laughs> so if you listen to the radio chatter um, or the radio communications, 
Booty started it and Freddie finished it. And Booty mm -hmm. said, Hey, um, you know, 10 to go. You're the 11s, 10 back, and the 20s behind him. And he tells that to Freddie, and Freddie says, Got it. And then he says, Make Bubba aware the 11 is back, 11s, you know, seven back, and the 20s right behind him. And oh. then Freddie's like, Yep, 10 4, got it. I will. And then he does, makes him aware and says, um, 11's coming, uh, 20's right behind him. And then he goes on to say, 24 and 20 are racing for points. Uh, one point makes up the difference. Okay. And then sh literally like right after that, Bubba says something, or I forget, maybe go another yeah. lap or two. And then all of a sudden, Freddie or Freddie says something like, here they come. And he goes, literally simultaneously, Bubba goes, I think I got a tire going down. And then Freddie says, get it up top. You know, here comes the group. Here they come. Yeah, Two to go, salvage it. Yep. And then literally they finish the line, and Bubba's getting down to pit road. And they're like, oh, you're on, you're on fire. Your brake rotors, you know, this and the other thing. And Freddie literally on the radio goes, eh, tires all look up. Doesn't no, nothing not like Freddie. Freddie's got to shut his mouth. Um, he literally said as he's going to pit road after the race, he's like, I I'm think not he said, anything. Yeah, I've not seen anything. Y'all look up. I don't know. So, Larry, I, I listened to Larry McReynolds a little bit on the radio. I mean, you want to talk about a guy that was hot, he was hot, and oh. he says, What does this is kind of referring to the 100% rule in NASCAR that Bob Ockers posted uh today i think the 100 yep. percent you gotta you're you're in it for yourself basically yep like and, and the radio communication and radio, larry said you, nascar gets all radio communication so why are you even saying it on the radio to start with because nascar is gonna hear it guilty is guilty is charged exactly you want to talk about getting caught ran handed but then he's like what does William Byron and Christopher Bell's playoff status mean to your race? What does that have to do with your race? There's no. nothing involved in it. No. So why are you getting this. playoff updates when you're not even in contention for it? So I thought about this. And again, we would talk about manipulation. Bubba hears that. Ooh. Maybe he needs to do it before he hears that. I don't know if he know, any all the Toyota stuff aside of this. What needed to happen for Bubba to keep himself out of trouble because they tore that car down. I'm yep. assuming if nothing's broke, he's going to get a penalty. Freddie's probably oh. going to have himself in a little trouble. Booty. He's going to get an early vacation. What needed to happen? Looking back on it now, what needed to happen is that 23 car needed to scrub the wall one good time. Not a caution. You, you you have to hit it hard enough that it causes an issue, but you don't bring out the yellow to ruin the playoff race. You need to hit. You need to hit hit the wall coming out of two or four on the last lap. On one of the laps, you got to hit it hard enough that you can make a case that something's broke or I got a flat. Maybe so. Not Scrub it once or twice. I, I don't know. Maybe you don't hit it real hard, but you just scrub it enough to make yep. note of it that the camera can see the 23 hitting the wall. Yep. I don't know. And here's the biggest gripe that I have with that, now that you say that, is now that I think I'm recalling it correctly, is Freddie comes on the radio and says, here comes the 11, you know, they're five back, or they're seven back coming to you. It's the 11 and the 20. The 20s race in the 24 for points. Uh, one point is the difference. And literally after that, Bubba comes on the radio and says, I think I got a tire going down. Again, what does that have to do with Bubba's race? Yeah, ladybugs all over the goddamn place. So time out. It's coming from Toyota. It's coming from top down because Booty on the radio is saying. I got it. Yep. It's coming from top down because Booty is saying, Freddie, tell Bubba that, no. that the 11 is 10 back. And Freddie was kind of confused on the radio at first. And I, he must big brain Freddie. I Picked think, up on it. it. Yeah. 
because Bubba, if, like when Booty <laughs> said, tell Bubba that they're the eleven and twenty are ten back. Bubba's Freddie was like, okay, and like Freddie was confused, and then Booty comes on again and says, no, tell Bubba and make him aware the eleven and the twenty are about seven or eight back, and then he's like, all right, yeah, got. It. We're gonna manipulate this. <laughs> It took that second cue, and then the, yeah, yeah, and the yeah. green lights lit up. <laughs> I've got I've got a thing about the higher ups when we talk about after the Chevy thing. I'm going to save my point for that. Okay, so I, I just have a feeling there is a little something there. It, I don't think 2311 was expecting them to tear that car down. So I tell you what, that's that's they're not. Gonna, they're not. They're already not anymore. in a good spot. With the whole lawsuit thing as it is. That's where I think they're going to get their nuts in the vice. And then, not to mention, too, it's not like Bubba's under a microscope every week, and we know why. Correct. Let's, address, let's not forget about the elephant in the room when it comes to Bubba. So you and want to talk about a guy that doesn't need people, more people, hassle than he already gets. All that, and people have been calling for his job. Yep. People have been calling for him. You know, what does Michael Jordan want to do? He wants to win championships. Th- let's just put the statistics up with a Joe Gibbs, a Hendrick, a Penske. How well? How does Tyler Reddick in his second year with the order, organization get? I'm going to say double the wins and in the championship four before Bubba. Sorry, but those are the facts. Correct. So that that all of that aside, this the twenty three eleven has got themselves in a tricky spot with a lawsuit alone. They're not NASCAR's. They're not on NASCAR's Christmas list. It, it, let's be honest. It didn't help them. No, it certainly didn't help them because NASCAR just took an opportunity and said, "Put that thing in the garage. I'm gonna we're gonna have the tech officials tear it apart." Or or and especially since we had the injunction hearing today, you're you're under investigation for manipulating a race. Mm-hmm. Why should we give you this benefit of a charter? We're well, trusting you and giving you this money, and yet you're going to go and manipulate a race, a playoff race at that. To determine a championship. To determine a championship. Switching. Yep. Okay. So, from Let's this to talk, the next race manipulation. <laughs> What to the Chevy side of things here? So Byron was struggling. Let's <laughs> let's stress that fact. Byron was struggling. Severely. And he was told multiple times, especially by Rudy, and this is where this radio communication comes into play for a good yep. scenario. You can lose one. You can't lose two. For a playoff driver that is on that cusp, that is a good radio communication. Yep, that's the information well, he needs. That is good. Yep. For one one instant. Yep. Or one For, scenario. Yep. Fugal to Byron. That is it. Yes. You are you can lose one, you can't lose two. Okay, got it. It's a pretty cut and dry. Yep. Now, when Chastain and Dylan, who are racing side by side, catch up to him very quickly and then miraculously can't get around him or get out of side by side. For multiple laps, the one that really, the one that really did it for me was when Haley and Smith slowed up on the front stretch. Byron sl- checked up to get around them, and neither of those two guys behind them took the gap. Correct. I mean, you're telling me. <laughs> uh, I I hear you. Okay, uh-huh. so then, did you hear Dylan's radio communication? Yep, here we go again. Did you hear before the race? The before the race, no. There was one on before the race or on pace laps. This is before everything, right? Oh, God. Before the race even started, and I wish I had the radio communication, but they said, do you remember the plan? Like, what are we doing? so I'm 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 gonna sit, go I'm gonna back up here and say okay. that could be 
before the race even starts, if you say, just remember the plan, like it, we, you know, that could be a number of things. Yep. A number of things. And, you know, from NASCAR, what was it? Full speed. You know, when you go to Talladega and they, they let you on in on insight and the Ford manufacturer says, you know, make the moves, but whatever you do, make sure a Ford wins this race. And it's like, okay. So if they're reminding him, Hey, whatever you do today, we're not in this, but you know, if you can raise somebody hard, if you can race Blaney and make him use his shit up to help, you know, Chevy make the playoffs, you know, that might be the plan. It, the plan might be make, make everybody else's life. Yeah. I mean, their plan might be anybody that's not a Chevy make, make their life living hell. Well, except for turned out to be Ross Chastain. <laughs> Which, and I just, but then the middle of the race, you know, the three saying, somebody saying, does the one know the plan too? Or does the one know the strategy? Yes, especially that and then one. It's like, it's like, all right. <laughs> Yep. You got, and, then you got, and then you got let's let's double down on the Chevy camp. Um, you got the crew chief for the 16 saying, Remember how Blaney raced you on a restart? And then he says, SVG like laughs. And then the crew chief literally comes back and says, That's from the top down at Chevrolet. Wanted us to remind you of that. I, yeah, and then you get the one that verifies the plan as well. <laughs> so it's just again. We're doing this on the radio, and we're talking about playoff scenarios for drivers. Just listening to it on my idiot box at home. The yeah. average consumer was listening to this go down on my box at home. I it, it, Don't even get me started with all of the SMT data, oh. all of the in-car radios, all of the officials at the track. It doesn't even start. And I'm listening to it with my little phone on my couch at home. Like, Yeah. <clears throat> like... Way to just throw yourself under the bus. Well, I can before you jumped on. I was looking on the old X machine. I had saw a tweet. It was the picture of the one and the three behind the 24. And it goes, uh, the 24 had a police escort the last 25 laps. I mean, literally. And then Brad K was pissed. Uh, he was. He was... And rightfully so. And, you know, in his scenario, he can't, he can't send the other guys up because they're too wide in front of him. He was buried. Yeah. With another Chevrolet on the outside of him to boot. Dude. <laughs> but I will say one thing. If there's Poor one guy. person that you want, if there's one person you want giving you an escort, it's Chastain. Because there's nobody better to the driving out the rear view. Nobody's getting by him. Than, than Chastain. Uh, and he made it very well known. He's not afraid to run someone over either. No. <laughs> so... Willie B I had that warm, fuzzy feeling knowing he was behind him. So do we – let's talk about – can we talk about the manufacturer then? Let's talk specifically, I guess, in this scenario, Chevy. Yep. Are the manufacturers themselves getting too involved as far as how the race plays out? At this point, I'm going to have to say yes. So, like, we let's go back to Daytona, the whole Parker, Parker Retzloff deal. With him not shoving Bush to the wind. And yep. I mean, he caught hell for that. Like, he has yep. supposedly been kicked out of the Chevy program because of it. Well, did you, also see, did you also see he got, he got junked by a Chevy this weekend, too. So, it's just how... Why are the manufacturers getting so involved in making the calls? Because it's just what happened to Hendricks are going to run their race. RCR is going to run the race. Joe Gibbs is going to run their race. It's so remember when we talked about somebody getting really good after the all-star break. Yeah. Did one of those two cars get the other one in the playoff question mark? Did the three O Hendrick one? Well, there was speculation. I'm just saying. Yep. Nope. I get that, but it's just okay. So, uh, well, I think we'll we'll talk about the penalty bit in here in a bit. One of the points that I made, and I we 
this is where we kind of got the held the thumbs back. Can't, yeah, you made the comment of let's hold the thumbs back and let's save it for this. Yep. Was Byron, for lack of a better term, was he innocent in this deal? And I say yes. Was Byron I don't, innocent? Was Byron innocent? Because I don't think he had him or few. Byron for sure. Maybe Fugel. Can't prove it. But I think Byron, and especially in his radio communications, was told you can't lose two. You can't lose two. They never said anything about Chastain and Dylan are going to help you. So I put in the group chat today, my suspicion of where this is going to go is Byron's going to get Das Boot and Larson's going to get put in. I thought you were joking when you sent that, but okay. Um, because That's... look, so if we, if NASCAR comes out of Wednesday and says, you know, Bubba, you're getting a penalty for race manipulation. You let off, you yep. let off, you know, we looked at data and you were, you know, your car wasn't broke. We tore your car down and you were running, you know, so the last two laps when Friday was telling you to limp three it seconds on the high slower. side, three seconds slower, you're running yep. 62% throttle. Okay. That is race manipulation. Yep. Now, you can take Bubba's situation and go directly to the Chevy camp and you can pull SMT data from the one and the three. And you yep. can directly say the one and the three manipulated this race and they were running, you know, 82% throttle the whole time, you know, this, that, and the other thing. How do I you think... link? Finish your thought. I know you're going to ask, how do you link Byron to the race manipulation? But if we're going back to the manufacturers, they're all under the same cover. And I think it's going to come back to the radio chatter, but it's also going to be, does Byron's team mention anything at all about that type of plan? <laughs> That's... <laughs> If that's got to be the Byron, connecting part. If Fugel or Byron, if there's one plan in the radio chatter, he's fucked. Challenge, you're going to have to mark plan, this as a explicit episode. I'm sorry. I will. <laughs> sorry. If, I will. Either way, I just. He's in trouble. It's I agree. If, not, there, not if there's. If, if Fugel and Byron say plan. On the radio chatter, chatter at all, he's in trouble. But I, and you I, know, guess I just, I just sit there and think, when you look at the race, Bubba slows down and he manipulates the race, and Bell benefits. Yep. So I'm looking at the one and the three as Bubba in this situation, and Byron benefiting. I could definitely see where the SMT could come into play, and especially since we made the point that Byron was struggling. Mightily. Bad. Mightily. Yep. Correct. So, okay, so... I, I think it's going to come down to radio chatter because I I think you do have a tough time connecting the two. They're going to say, you know, you know, Byron didn't do anything. The thing with the Bubba and Bell situation is... Bell did it to himself by wall riding. Correct. Had he not wall rode, we'd be having the same exact conversation about these two scenarios. Yep. But Byron doesn't have a, he did something, he didn't wall ride, he didn't do anything, you know, whatever. So it is a little bit tougher to connect them. Now, if Byron and they go back to the radio chatter and between Byron and Fugel, they talk about a plan. You're done. Yep. <laughs> that also I, on this whole situation it, it, we've got a we've got a shit show on our hands to be this honest, is because this is a turning point i mean this is one of those situations where and, and i think this is where the conversation comes in as far as what we should expect as far as penalties go is this is nascar's moment to lay the hammer down yep 
late and the last time they did this was obviously with the Clint Boyer situation and at, at Michael Waltrip racing. And a lot of people credit the penalty that came afterwards from that as the, as the blow that closed that race organization down. Michael Waltrip was uh, fairly active on Twitter. I'm just going to be honest. Well, Kyle yeah. Petty was active so, on Twitter as well. So the other thought I had is the great, the great scandal. Of, go ahead. Uh, Denny Hamlin today, per his actions detrimental. This is not a Martinsville problem. I hate to say it. It's a format problem. Don't hate the player, hate the game. Correct. Okay, two points here about hating the game. I'll hate on the game. Um, first point, um, who are we just talking about? Hamlet. Walter. <laughs> well, both. Right before, both. Right before, right before Wall Trip. Boyer. One step back, one more. Byron. Um, forgot the first point. You guys want to say don't hate the player, hate the game. And Elton Sawyer coming out and saying. Oh, first point. What if this turns into the great scandal of 2025 that we start looking back and it's like, yeah, we've been rigging races like this for years. Because all of a sudden this start this chatter starts coming up and it's like teams the plan this, the plan that, the plan this. Things come out. Yeah. And now all of a sudden it's I'm like gonna, oh. I'm gonna say that with one exception. Plate racing. True. Plate, yep. plate racing is different because if Hendrick said this to every other Chevy camp, Hendrick would be lapsed down because they wouldn't be able to make speed. Yep. I, I'm going to say Dega and Daytona and probably yep. now Atlanta, those are ichnade just with the presence of you got to have more than four cars to make speed. And that really only came to be from the tandem drafting era. Correct. As far as having to make partners or come up with a plan with within the organization or within the OEM, the manufacturer. Okay. So after the race last night, wall trip tweets, all it said was interesting. So I want to get back to you guys saying, don't hate the player, hate the game. Elton Sawyer said in his press conference again, this format, this racing format produced, this is producing. So he's doubling down on you guys saying don't hate the players, hate or don't hate the players, hate the game. And he's doubling down on that. I and y'all know what I y'all know what my answer to that is, Mr. Sawyer. Are we really getting it right when I don't know? eight, nine, 12 times this year, you've had to come out after a race and make a statement on why we came to a judgment or why this happened. Or why well, this I mean, happened. you, I forget who put it in the group chat, but somebody had a, you know, what's happened in 24 list. I did. Let me fire it up. You got, you're, you're think we're on the same wavelength here. It's yep, just, let me get that tweet out. And that, but Cam, you bring up a great point where NASCAR as an organization has been brought to the attention of their decision making a lot this year, and that's not the way it's supposed to be. All right, you ready? Go for it. Let's recap 2024. Changes made year to implement soft tires. Seventy five thousand dollar fine for a punch. <laughs> Coke six hundred delay. Yep. Chicago cut short again. Brickyard 400 finish screw up. Austin Dillon Richmond incident. Yep. Flips everywhere. Well, that's lawsuit on NASCAR Martinsville playoff instance. A lot so, of instances where NASCAR has been in the spotlight. 
Coke 600 delay. Chicago cut short, knowing what was going on. Having to make a call on Austin Dillon. Tires. Well, the um, it the IMS restart. Given that's you know that could be another scenario like the Kyle Busch instance where. Now I'm trying to remember. I don't think the pace car had pulled off at that point, or at least in the process was. I think the car was in the process of pulling off. Yeah, and did the six follow? Was it the six? The six went to pit road. Yep. I think he pretty much followed the pace car. Correct, and then Larson went up and who gained control of the restart then at that point getting off topic either way. Yep. So I don't know. I, you want to talk about what we should expect for a penalty? Yep. So, so I think bell is done. Bell has gotten his penalty. Yep. They checked the box on the 20. Correct. So now we get to the 23 and or 2311. Yep. I, I think so, it's got to be, I mean, it's hard to suspend a crew chief, a spotter, and a driver. So I think you do crew chief and spotter. Yep. And then the organization gets a fine as well, 2311. Fine, yep, okay. With a probation for 25. Yeah, see, I could see them saying Booty and Freddie are, you got caught, you get a vacation for Phoenix, sorry, season's over. Well, but I think the thing is, too, is that it's got, if you want to make this penalty worth it, you got extended into 25. So I guess that to me is where I think twenty three eleven will get a fine, booty and Freddie big fine, a, probably a fine, big and fine. then they're going to get a vacation from Phoenix. And I only say just Phoenix from the sense of we're going to put you on probation for the entire year next year. You 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 slip up one time, yep. good luck getting off the blacklist. You're walking on thin ice. Yep. Now, the, uh, to me, that's the 2311 thing. Now, Chevy. Now you've got possibly uh, Hendricks. Can't confirm. But you for sure have Trackhouse in the one team and Dylan in the three team, who have been in the spotlight once already. Chevy, not, Chevy not, is going to get hammered here. Let's go back to the uh, Rackham, Rackham, Rackham spotter of the three on <laughs> yep. Richmond. So um, insert that crew back into the conversation. Yep. Kellen, you bring a great point. Chevy, can NASCAR come to Chevy with any penalties, do you think? Yeah, I'm thinking so. I I I think we have to. I think if you want this penalty to be worthwhile, you have to somehow penalize the Chevy GM OEM, the manufacturer. So I say yes. Chevy now going. Let's go back to the Toyota side of things. Chevy will get hammered. Now I am going to say that Toyota should get something. Should it be as as magnificent as Chevy? No. Nope. But I do think Toyota, it, you got two different manufacturers doing it. I, you got to give Toyota something if you're going to hammer Chevy. I, I, yep. But it's not going to be to the level that Chevy not, pounded. I could agree with that. So maybe call it Toyota. They're going to say, okay, you get, you get probation for the first 16 races, the first 20 races the next season, where Chevy might get it for the whole year. So – can there be any monetary fines? I just, I, what, how can the OEMs be penalized? How? Sure, you can go on probation, but I think in the sense of as long as you don't manipulate anything, you're fine. Technical inspections are completely separate, I feel. You cannot. Yeah. 
Tech comes down to the teams. Correct. But even then, Tech comes down to it, – it's a separate instance. Now – Do you start to go to the driver's – or the owner side of things? Can owners be suspended from the racetrack? Can – can you penalize? Can you penalize testing time? Maybe Hendrick doesn't get the test. We're gonna do a tire test. Hendrick, you don't get a car. Or Mark's Chevy, smart. sorry, you get, you get, you don't get to participate, or you get half the time, or you piss a lot of people. Oh, okay, so okay, you do it for you do it for Hendrick, RCR, and Trackhouse. All right, sorry, your spots are filled by other Chevy teams. But they get the data at some point. You got to eliminate the transmission of data then. That's hard to do because I feel like that's hard to do. Correct. It's been very clearly noted this year, but I I, I don't know. I The more this conversation goes on, I... it's going to flip the sport upside down is what it's going to oh. do. And it might, I I will have to say this, knowing how much they've talked about the championship weekend, they are not going to do anything until after the championship weekend. I think they're going to blow this. They're going to take their time. They're going to run through the championship race. I think in the off season, first of the year, we're getting ready for next year. They're going to say, we've looked at everything to AT with a fine tooth comb. SMT, radio data, transmission from team to team, driver audio. They're going to listen to everything, and they're going to say, you know what? They're going to slam their fist on the table and go, we've had enough. This is what we're going to do. Because they're going to – excuse my language. They're going to fuck this up for somebody to win a championship, and they're going to be talking about all of the shit at Martinsville rather than someone winning a championship that may never get to do that again. You can't that up yeah well if you don't hurry up though and make a move though then if we come down with with the hammer in january are we going to look back and say well whoever won the championship in november well this kind of discredits their their championship win but how do you make that decision i i don't know yet how do you make that decision week and the more this conversation goes on dude this is this is war, and uh, oh yeah. I, and I, NASCAR I has two, like you were saying, NASCAR has two opportunities to absolutely flip everything on its on its head between the lawsuit and this. This is war, and the more we go on, you know, I thought I was coming in here to you know drop the hammer on these games and manipulation, but the more this goes on, what if we just let this let it go? Let every let every manufacturer come back to the track next year. Hey, you guys drop whatever plan you want. If Larson, you got to be the sacrificial lamb for the team this week, and you got to, <laughs> dude, that is that. Now we're talking about some serious race, and you want to add a whole new dynamic. Hey, this week in the plan, Elliot and Larson, you guys are to make everybody's life a living hell, and. uh Byron and uh, Bowman, this is your week to get a win. So, uh, <laughs> and this comes from Chevy on the top down. Um, everybody, this week we are trying We're to get cards for the week. You get to try to win. <laughs> now you want to talk about a whole new dynamic of uh, when a racer or a team disobeys the grand plan. <laughs> now we got some storylines. So. The more Jesus. this conversation goes on, I'm kind of okay with this. You want chaos, don't you? Let Chevy handle it. Well, but to this I, point, you want to talk about like you know you're you're waking up and choosing violence. You want to know who else also woke up and choose violence? And I had to get this point in. Seabell. Cool. Yeah, this morning, a picture of him with Gibbs with two guys without a bow tie. <laughs> wow. It's kind of a biscuit, anyhow. <laughs> we're going to see something big here. And we're going to have another episode like this where the entire episode is going to be the discussion of that. Well, it's going to change the it's going to change the layout of the sport forever. Yep. 
you can't not deny that fact that this is going to change the sport forever. Yep. I don't know, boys. All I'm telling you is you better buckle up. Man. I think I hit all the points that I needed to on this whole thing. Yeah, I think I've said my piece. I didn't come to an answer of what I thought I was going to, but I think I've said my piece. No, I, I don't know. I, yeah, I've said my piece too. If anything, this conversation has kind of muddied the water. Because um, <laughs> I, I guess I don't know. I guess I'm sitting there going, you know what? If you want to manipulate a race for a position and you want to you wanna put yourself in that position to – as a competitor, say I'm going to do something, finish worse than what I know I'm capable of. If you want to do that, there's a special place for you, and it's at a, in a lower series like the Xfinity or Truck Series. So, well, okay, but to that point, now we've seen we've seen all three series this weekend have an issue when it came to the playoff format, and I think I think this has got to be a different discussion in the off season as far as the playoff format. But you have had the playoff. You could say the playoff format has generated these three things to happen this weekend. You saw it in all three series. Yeah, you could say can, that. Can you argue I against that? I guess I'm talking more so the manipulation side of it. Okay, but the whole mani- as, manipulation as, thing. Do you know what? As Ross Chastain and Austin Dillon and Bubba Wallace, if you as a competitor can look me in the eyes and say, do you know what? I'm willingly going to finish worse than what I know my car and skills are capable of. There's a special place for somebody like you. If you're going to willingly do that. Four yep. cylinders. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. So Stan can go back to the watermelon farm. One, one last point I want to make here and then I'll, I'll rest my case and, unless you stir and me. Otherwise. Dylan can go back to a behind the scenes role at RCR. Shit. All right, point I want to make here. You could say that there's been some sort of manipulation for all times. Even if you went back to the very old point system of you had the points, the season-long point standings. Yeah. One of the points that was made was how often... in Cup Series next year. What? On that point, I can't wait to have a second Dylan in the Cup Series next year. All right, back to the conversation. Talk about collusion. Back to the conversation at hand here. There was a point made where let, let's just go back to uh, let's just pick a year ninety eight, whatever the case may be. You know how many times there was there was a time where at the second to last third you know last races of the year where teams that were in contention for winning the championship would purposely enter another car to park that car so that the championship car would get that one extra point from not finishing last. Yep. You're guaranteeing you're guaranteeing your car doesn't finish at least last and gets a little more points if they end up wrecking. By purposely putting a car in and then parking it. Yeah, the hard part now is we have the true, I hear you. Yeah. Yep. So I just I had to make that point. I I for the moment rest my case. Where does the shit end though? Let's be honest. Where do you quit? Where do you just go? Yeah, it, yeah. We 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 solidified it. You you don't. Yep. yep. From manufacturers to team owners to drivers to spotters to engineers to manufacturing presidents and mm, yeah, yep. I don't family. even family. You need to get off of this train that you're on right now. Gibbs, Gibbs, grandpa and grandson in there. It's another one. That car was magically broke too. Well, they've also broken how many transaxles in the past five races? I know, but I'm just saying. Job security's never been higher though. Well, yeah, he owns one of the Xfinity cars. (laughs) <laughs> as an Xfinity owner, yeah, but as a Cup Series driver, he's part of the Joel Gibbs organization. His family. 
He's got a behind the scenes he, role with the organization. Just remember wise words, my friends. Your family is Gibbs your family. Is gonna, Gibbs, Gibbs is going to be in a cup car for the next 24 years. 24. Christ, he's only 20. Okay. 28. Either way. We don't need to go down this rabbit hole. Not today, at least. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's let's preview a couple races. We'll get this wrapped up and we'll get you guys out of here for the for the night, the day, the weekend, whenever you might be listening or watching to this. Um so I'll go ahead and grab this first race preview in we're on this train. We might as well get in there. Um, Friday night, trucks are racing for a championship at Phoenix. Saturday afternoon, if you get that stupid CW channel, you can watch Xfinity race for a championship. And then uh, Sunday, the big dogs, as we had just mentioned about it, they have uh, they will be racing for a championship on Sunday. So their final fours are all settled. They'll be well noted. It'll be well documented who's racing for titles in those respective series. So. Uh, Phoenix usually puts on some pretty good racing. So tune in. Trucks will be on Fox, Xfinity on crappy television, CW. and then um, <laughs> the Cup Series on NBCSN. Let's touch on the you Final know, Four here real quick. Hold on. You know, you want to know what, first off, quick point, the truck race can't wait for it. Hopefully we get similar fin- or finish like no. we did last year. Yeah, stop. Fan out, out ten wide, can't get a green lap in. Uh, can't stop. Wait. You know what CW stands for? What? Can't watch. Well, I can watch. So <laughs> I can't. All right. Can. <laughs> All right. Final fours. Let's let's do this before we get ourselves in trouble. Final fours. So we mentioned the trucks a little bit earlier. Corey Heim, Ty Majeski, Christian Eck is a grand end finger. Yep. Uh, if my page would load here, Xfinity side, we got Justin Allgaier, Cole Custer, AJ Allmendinger, and Austin Hill. And then on the cup side, oh, hey, by the way, uh, Ryan Blaney won the race on Sunday. We haven't discussed that yet. No. Um, uh, Ryan Blaney, Joey Logano, Tyler Reddick, and William Byron will be your final four for that race. Yep. Or for that championship, I should say. Yeah, great. Right. Great. That last big preview we got. Yeah, so the only other real race that's going on, at least nationally, is going to be the Dirt Track World Finals for the World Outlaws. So you're going to have both the limited, li- or the, sorry, the late models and the sprint cars in action. You're also going to have the big block modified. So you get three champions crowned all this weekend. Um, Wednesday will be qualifying day um, for everybody there. And then Thursday, Friday, set up pretty much Saturday's race. Uh David Gravel and Carson Macedo are pretty much the only two still in the mix for the Sprint Car Championship. Uh, David Gravel did win a race here at Charlotte last year, so he'll be sitting in a good position. Um, on the late model side, it is down to Brandon Shepard, uh, Bobby Pierce, and Nick Hoffman. None of them won a race here last year, but Pierce was the best running out of the three of them in the races. Uh, like I said, it's four nights at Charlotte. Wednesday will be qualifying, and then Thursday, Friday will be prelims and up for Saturday. Point standings wise, Dave Gravel leads Carson Macedo by 74 points. Uh, Brandon Shepard leaves Bobby Pierce by 44 points, and then Nick Hoffman by 50 points as we head into the weekend. So, quick point there um, if anybody is on the old X app, uh, Dave Gravel had the old. Um, interesting photo one caption today. 2K25. Um, and uh, Brad Sweet had an interesting response to the tweet and just said, you like winning championships too much to come over to high limit racing. Ooh. Throwing the gauntlet down. Oh. Um, Looking at the schedule, outside of the races we have mentioned, there's uh, one other series in action on our schedule, and that would be the Arca Menard series, who will also race at Phoenix, along with Truck, Xfinity, and Cup Series. So, All right. Uh, let's jump into a fantasy recap, we'll make some race picks, we'll get you guys out of here. Yeah, fantasy. So, uh, season's pretty much... Uh 
wrap getting wrapped up on our end. I'm going to win on. I think I'm pretty much going to win on the overall point standings portion of things. But Kellen, unless you have an absolutely disastrous weekend, you've yeah. got the playoffs portion of it wrapped up. For sure. So I currently sit in second in the playoffs. Cam, you're in third. Uh, Abby's in fourth. Carolyn is in fifth, and then Dietz sits in sixth currently in the playoffs. Yep. For sure. Uh, on the race pick side of things, me and Cam are still kind of neck and neck here when it comes to race picks. I only lead by 25 points. Um, and then, Kellen, you're just kind of back there. Yep. A couple good picks for you, and you can still get back into her, but yep. go from there. So, uh, I ended up having the best race pick last week with my pick of Larson. Cam, you were second with Hamlin, and then, Kellen, you had Bell. So you got first pick, and it looks like you already got your man in there. Yep. I picked my champ. I'm taking the 22 of Joey Logano to be your 2024 Cup Series champion. Uh, is that race pick or is that championship pick? Both. Okay. So obviously I'm pretty sure our championship picks are locked in except for Cam, whose driver got eliminated. Yep. So Cam, you at least get to pick a race pick here for Phoenix. Yeah, well, he got eliminated, but I'm still going to pick him. Hung money. Well then I'm going to take the low-hanging fruit here. Boy is going to go back to back. Give me Blaney well, as the race pick. I am going to take him as my championship. I'm going to I'm going to hedge my bets here a little bit. Sure. There you have it. Those are the race picks for the final Cup Series race of the year. So we'll be on a little bit of a hiatus here after the weekend uh, until about early February. So... Well, that wraps up the 58th edition of the Tuesday Track Talk. Um, I feel like we forget to mention it, but uh, you can listen to us on the go on your favorite platform. So if you enjoy watching live, this is the place to be. If you want to listen on the go at any point, get it on all of your favorite platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, um, iHeartRadio, wherever you want to listen, we're there. So um, listen on the go. But until then, We'll catch you all next week for the Tuesday Track Talk.